So we're going to go over Israeli trauma bandaging, uh, packing wounds, just kind of soft tissue injuries, compressible versus non-compressible injuries. Uh, first thing, I need a volunteer. Brad. Everybody's had good Brad. Call Brad. Oh, uh, Brad. All right. Uh, somebody call out an injury to an extremity. Oh, <laughs> Anything. <laughs> Bear trap to the left arm. Bear trap to the left. What were you doing in the bear trap? Was there, was there a chicken wing on Putting there? that set down. Okay, all right. So we've got an injury to the left arm. Bear trap is probably going to be low. Let's look at something right over here in the, uh, in the, the forearm. So it's already exposed, like we were talking about before. Uh, a trauma patient is, unfortunately, a naked patient. Uh, something like this I'm not going to be too worried about. I am going to expose the rest of his, his shirt here, look up into his shoulder. We'll check for other injuries and potential later. Did you hit your head? Did you fall down? Maybe. Maybe. All right. Well, goodness, that's going to be a whole other uh, ball of worms. All right. First thing I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to look for a distal pulse. We were talking about pulses a little bit earlier. Radial pulse is right here. Everybody check their partner. Feel that radial pulse. Moving up from there is a brachial pulse right up under here in the uh, mid-axillary area. Femoral. We're not going to check that one. I, I believe he's got one. And then a pedal pulse right there on the top of your feet. So, yep, he's got a distal pulse there. Excellent. Uh, we can, if we want to, depending on the severity of the injury, get some sterile 4x4s, put that on the injury first, then wrap with the Israeli. Today we're just going to wrap with the Israeli. So it's going to have a white side there. Keep that sterile. Don't get your fingers all over it. So keep that sterile. That's going to go on the injury. I'm going to wrap that little tail up underneath and start wrapping back on top of itself. A couple of different ways to do this. Uh, my preferred method is to go on both sides of those little ears, get it fully underneath, and then wrap back on top of itself. And from there, we're going to wrap away. I'm going to go high, I'm going to go low. If I do feel like I need to create more pressure there, I can put a twist inside that bandage right over the top of the injury. I'm not going to do that the first couple of wraps. I want something inside there first. A couple of ways to finish it. It does have a little hook on the opposite end. I can hook that onto the bandage itself. Uh, if you've ever used an ACE bandage, it's always got that Velcro that never wants to stick. Uh, I would rather take that last row that I just put down, take this little clip, and stuff it right underneath. I know that that's not going to go anywhere. From there, I'm going to look, assess, am I bleeding through? Nope, looks pretty good. I'm going to check that distal pulse again. Yep, still there. If I do lose that distal pulse, but I knew I had it a minute ago, I'm going to go ahead and undo that and loosen it up a little bit. Okay, how's that feel? Good, all right, good to go. Um, let's work through a couple of these real quick. Partner up, get in groups of two or three. Uh, I'll walk around and help you guys apply these. Let's put one right over here. Always want to feel the pulse first. So if that's an uh, injury to the arm, let's go ahead and check that radial pulse. If you've got something to the leg, we're going to check right on top of your instep, right on top of your foot there. And do you want to feel it the same as before you tight wrap it? You're going to want to feel it about faint, the same. Faint. About the same. The same? Yep. Okay. So his wrap, you're feeling his pulse here. You, so you don't want to feel the pulse here, right? I do with this. With a tourniquet, I want the bleeding to completely stop. If he had an entire, uh, let's say, a, a severed hand, okay, and I had bleeding coming out from a hand that's no longer there. I would want that bleeding to completely stop. So we would do a tourniquet a couple inches above the wound. If that doesn't do it, then we would apply one higher. Just like I said before, you always want to start low. If I need to address more, I'm going to go high. With the Israeli, I still want perfusion out here. This hand is good. I just have a soft tissue injury above it. So I still want blood to be out there perfusing that, that distal extremity. <laughs> so I, I still want to feel a pulse down. There is a way to use this as a tourniquet, but we'll get into that in just a minute. Okay, no, that's, uh, that's good. Okay, that was okay. a good question. Thank you. Here, can you go ahead and apply one? All right, so let's say that we have the same injury here, a laceration. So first thing that we're going to do, check for that, that distal pulse. Go ahead and use your, your pointer finger and your middle finger. The reason for this 
is that radial pulse coming down your thumb is pretty strong. So if you were to check it with your thumb, you might be feeling your own pulse. Use those first two fingers, it's gonna be right in this little valley right there. So you feel that, that radius and the ulna just inside that bone in that little soft spot. Now why do you, why do you feel the pulse in the beginning? Because if he's got a wound and I don't feel a pulse down there, I need to, to tell the person that I'm gonna pass him off to, he didn't have a pulse down there to begin with. So we've got another issue inside here dealing with his circulatory system, uh, an arterial bleed or a venous bleed that I found immediately. So what do we do? That would be surgery. Yeah, so that, that would be a surgical field, issue. This is the field, and what would I do? Then that you? hand is having a very bad day. Could I do anything for him? There's so nothing that you could do. Oh, no, no, no. You would oh, still, still address the wound. Okay. Yes, but to take Please. care of that problem for the long term, that's surgery. <laughs> and then double yep. back over. So you're going to hold that there so that it's not going to slide all the way around and then create some good tension up against it. Yep. I mean, I'm not doing it as hard as I might. And then you were going all the way around? And then, then I you continue hook it wrapping all the way so around. So you, you only do that once? Correct, yeah. That's going to create enough uh, pressure on that, on that wound. And then I'm going to wrap a little higher and a little lower than what that initial bandaging was done. Now, you twist it to get it a little bit tighter. You can, and you can do that with uh, with gauze as well, or like a Good. Curlex. Yeah, I can that's twist that gauze right over the top of the injury to create a little bit more pressure. And that, that's when you put it under the Israeli bandage. Or, or under or top, because I noticed that you twist it on the, the top one, the green now one. This, yes. So find the last loop. It's an option. Yeah, okay. It's an option. Yeah. Then it goes it's an option. There, yeah. And there again, if, if we're looking at something that's starting to bleed through, if that bandaging is okay, now it's seeping through, it's starting to turn red, I can unwrap a couple of wraps and cinch down tighter. I'm not going to take the whole thing off. I want that clotting to, to continue Stay. going. But I can put a couple of twists in there and tighten things down. What I do want to check for, did you get that pulse again? Perfect. So I'm, I got a good distal pulse so still. You want that pulse I want after that you wrap. So if, okay. if, I'm, if I'm looking at an at a absolute necessity for a tourniquet, then I'm probably going to lean that way prior to the Israeli trauma bandage. So, so the reasoning behind doing that twisting halfway through is because maybe the bandage is, is just uh, pushing out the blood. It's not really clotting it, so that's why you would twist it a little bit just to give a little bit more So, basic first aid. Uh, remember pressure, remember right. elevation. Right. These are all good things. It's stopping the flow of blood to that wound. Right. So the more pressure that I can create on there, the better, within reason. I still want good perfusion. I don't want his fingers turning blue. I don't want those veins to start popping out. Right. Too much resistance trying to get back. I still want good blood flow to that area, okay. but I also want that bleeding to stop. Okay. So finding that middle ground yeah. is, is ideal.